I'm uh, Jesse Sherry. I'm an associate professor of environmental studies. My specialty is sustainability and my background is in urban planning and public policy. I'm Tom Reese. I'm president of Ecosphere Restoration Institute. We're a nonprofit organization that specializes in habitat restoration, including living shorelines. Why not keep repairing the seawall? Well, you know, one, they have a limited lifespan, 10, 20, 15 years. Eventually, they crack, they break, they have to be replaced. Two, they are ultimately a man-made attempt to hold nature in place, right? Um, they are literally a wall, and the goal is to reflect energy away from the site. It bounces the energy that it receives back out into the water, and so in terms of anything trying to survive in kind of the water in front of the seawall, it's getting hit twice, right? The, the ener wave energy comes in and then immediately bounces back. So it's a very like rough area for, for any kind of ecology to develop. It's a combination of this mentality. It's like, I have my human thing that has to be kept safe and separate from the natural world. And, you know, we could keep doing that. It's not really the, I, not just like the image that Eckerd wants to project, but it's not the idea of like what we're doing here or who we are. We've been doing these projects for a long time. We weren't calling them living shorelines. We were just trying to work with nature instead of putting hard structures in. Is there ways to put stuff in that's softer, greener? and still protect the shoreline. Um, with the living shoreline, you get all the ecosystem services. And so we would like to go back to having more of those to improve water quality and provide habitat for fish and wildlife. Now, living seawalls um, are the weakest the day you put them in, because they're plants, right? And it takes a while for the plants to grow and coalesce. A seawall is the strongest the day you put it in, and then it gets weaker over time. So the advantage to a living shoreline, besides that it's cheaper and it provides these ecosystem services, is that it gets more resilient over time and self-sustaining. Construction is slated for this summer, um, and that is for the section kind of between the waterfront and Omega. Um, if you look at the area, one of the reasons we targeted it for the living shoreline was it's actually got a lot of wave action. So it's right where boats will come in from the bay into kind of the mouth of Frenchman's Creek. And it's right where the no wake zone is. So they cut their engine, but this big wave from their, their action will sweep over and it will scour along the wall there. The first part is from the waterfront to about the corner of the dog park. That section, there's lots of space. And so we can cut a gradual, I think it's a one to 10 slope. So for each like 10 feet of run, you only go down one foot. And so it's a nice gradual slope. It's good for grasses and things like that. The other section, Omega is too close to the waterfront to allow for that. So that's where it's more of a terrace idea. And um, because of that terrace idea, we will probably plant some marsh grasses and things in there as well. But mostly the idea is that mangroves will pretty quickly kind of succeed into that space and, and take it over. Not only are we going to put some resiliency to protect the shoreline, we're going to put resiliency in by putting a new height in of elevation 5. All this here is sitting at below 5. So we're going to have a berm, namely the sidewalk is going to be raised to elevation 5. And that way, when, sea wall, when the seas rise, it's not flooding the campus and we have the resiliency in front of it. We're gonna have the student body come out here and help us plant native plants, showing them exactly which plant goes where in the right elevation so that they are part of this. They, they actually, this is my project, right? I, I worked on this project and they'll get to see it mature. It's hard to fully appreciate something if you haven't experienced it. And it's really hard for you to then argue that it should be used elsewhere. And so I think even just having it on campus, having students be there, interact with it, study it, be familiar with it, and then when they leave Eckerd and they go to work wherever, this will be a viable possibility. Hey, we could put in a living shoreline, right? Like this is how it would work. And like I've seen it work. And I think that could make a big difference. You know, it's one of the big, I think, advantages of kind of just colleges and the students. And one of the reasons I wanted to be a professor is like, you train people in things, you expose them to things, and then they take those ideas out into the world and they take you know, a multitude of forms once they're, they're doing that. So. Get the students or, or whoever's involved with the project, get them out there literally planting because now they own it, right? And they can take ownership and maybe learn a little bit about this, right? A lot of this is new, right? A lot of this is brand new. And so, yeah, we know kind of what works, but the nuances and having the college here and the students to kind of say, hey, we're seeing this, you know, we're seeing in this area, we get more life. And then we think it's this, well, 
I'm going to design that in there, right? I, I want to learn from this, right? With the constant oversight of the students here, we'll really see these changes and, and hopefully inform better designs into the future.